Our very own Carl Quintanilla, getting back to the read, spoke with <laughs> McDonald's CEO Chris Kempensky about long-term shifts amid the pandemic. I think we did recognize that the pandemic offered us a number of opportunities. One was to simplify our menus. We had to do simplicity in our, in our menus, both out of necessity, uh, because we just didn't have as many people able to work in the kitchen. But I also think there was an opportunity there where we saw the power of our core menu. You know, one of the interesting things that happened is in the pandemic, people started going and, and wanting their, their familiar favorites. They were less interested in experimenting and much more interested in our core. And so getting regrounded in that from a business standpoint, and then we're, we're so fortunate in our business to have drive-through in 95% of our restaurants and to see how that became such a go-to service channel for our customers as they were uh, dealing with the pandemic. I, I think those two things together, it, it is all of a sudden this mindset switched from being you know, one of defensive to really being much more aggressive. See, I think that's fascinating uh, because it was your competitive advantage, more drive-throughs than anybody else, um, better engineering, I'm sure you would argue, than anybody else, and you streamlined to your core and you focused in on delivery and digital. Um, dine-in is not one of the Ds you talk about much, and I would never expect you to say that dine-in is dead, but long-term, is that a fade? I think dine-in is always going to be here. Eating is such a social experience, and dine-in is a part of that social experience. So I think dine-in is, is here to say it varies also around the world. Wages, of course, it's been a remarkable year uh, on that front. There was the argument made the other day, and I know you've recently made some announcements about raising wages by an average of 10 percent for tens of thousands of employees. Um, some argue that because $15 is sort of now a benchmark of sorts, not just at McDonald's, but at Amazon and Costco and Starbucks, that the so-called fight for 15 has been essentially won. You think that's true? I think what's happening is that you're seeing that uh, a, a great uh, economy is very helpful to growing uh, employee wages. And I think many of the changes that are happening from a wage standpoint are happening because of companies like McDonald's needing to compete for the best talent. So uh, I think, you know, what you're seeing here is is the benefit of, of that. You know, our move that you referenced around paying $15 an hour by 2024, which is the timeline that we laid out, uh, is because of our need to stay competitive. And, and when you have Walmart and Amazon uh, Target that you referenced all moving to $15, certainly that's a talent pool that we're competing with. So you know, we respond to uh, where the market uh, is moving. And I think there's also been, you know, topic about whether there needs to be, uh, you know, change in the federal minimum wage. We have uh, always said that, you know, we're happy to have that conversation. Ultimately, that's a policy question for lawmakers to make. But I think there's no doubt that 725 in this day and age uh, is not what you should be paying or need to be paying to be competitive in the marketplace, whether that's mandated through legislation or whether you just let, you know, kind of free market capitalism rule the day. Uh, wages are going up because the economy is strong. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.